and welcome you all again to Belmont Poetry Night. My name is Jackie Rigoni. I'm the Poet Laureate for Belmont, California, and which I also acknowledge as unceded Ohlone land. Um, <clears throat> Belmont Poetry Night is hosted on the third Tuesday of the month at the lovely Belmont Library. And uh, as you may have guessed, uh, for the last several months, we haven't been able to meet in person and meeting on Zoom has allowed us to expand our audience to a much wider range of folks. Last, last time we had folks all the way from Brooklyn. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword. One, you know, you take away something and get something else. Or when, when one door is closed, a window is opened. Uh, so our, just to let you know the, what's gonna happen tonight with our agenda, our featured poet will read uh, poets will read about 20 to 25 minutes of their poems. We may follow with a short question and an answer, uh, either questions from me or questions in the chat. Um, several folks emailed to volunteer to read tonight and uh, we have a full roster and time for one poem each. So I will put the reading order in the comments. And if you, uh, after we begin, and if you emailed me and you are not on the list, just go ahead and let me know on the chat. Otherwise, just sit back and, and take in all our amazing featured poets have to offer. Um, and like I said earlier, since everyone but the person speaking will be on mute, you can show your, your appreciation with American Sign Language for applause. Um, and then I'm, very glad to see you all here. I'd love to start by just at inviting you to uh, write in the chat where you're signing in from. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to see where, where everyone's calling in from. So you can go ahead and do that now. Lots of Belmont and Palo Alto, great. <laughs> nice. Yay, and Half Moon Bay, welcome, Fremont. Yay, great to see you all. San Francisco, yeah, love it. Great, a lot of the Bay, uh, wider Bay Area folks who may not have been able to uh, make it to Belmont Library. So welcome everyone. I'm really delighted to uh, introduce our featured poet tonight. Uh, Chun Yu is a PhD, Dr. Chun Yu, is the author of the multi-award winning memoir in free verse, Little Green, Growing Up During the Chinese Cultural Revolution, and also Emperor Poets, a historical graphic novel, which is in prog progress and will be published by Macmillan uh, and more. Her work has been published in the award-winning anthology, Veterans of War, Veterans of Peace, edited by our wonderful Bay Area, um, superstar Maxine Hong Kingston, um, also Open Doors, Boston Herald, MIT Tech Talk, and Xinhua Daily. Uh, what such a wide range of, of publications, MIT Tech Talk and, uh, and uh, poetry, <laughs> poetry publications. Um, interestingly, uh, Chin Yu's um, Bilingual Poetry Project in English and Spanish has won a San Francisco Arts Commission Cultural Equity Grant, and her graphic novel project on Chinese American immigration experiences has won a San Francisco Arts Commission Individual Artist Grant. We'll hear more about that in, in her presentation tonight. Chen's work merges science, art, and spirituality based on her experiences as an immigrant from an ancient culture undergoing a revolution to a new world of transformative science and technologies. Chen Yu holds a PhD in chemistry. Chen will be uh, joined tonight by Michael War. His books include Of Poetry and Protest from Emmett Till to Trayvon Martin. Uh, the Armageddon of Funk, We Are All the Black Boy, and Power Lines, A Decade of Poetry from Chicago's uh, Guild Complex. Michael was our featured poet last month. I'm delighted that he made this uh, connection with Chun and that uh, he liked it enough to join us <laughs> again tonight. <laughs> 
So please, everyone, welcome Chen Yu. Hi. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank, thanks to everybody who come here to this, this event. I'm really honored. Um, thank you, Jackie. Um, last time I saw Michael's event, it was really great. And so, um, yeah, I mean, tonight there is also two bilingual audience from uh, my friends, um, from my Chinese friends and who work and study here. So, and they, um, some of them went to um, Peking University and in, you know, to study chemistry with me. <laughs> so, so this is really great. So we're gonna talk about chemistry too. <laughs> So can we start, uh, Jackie, can we start sharing the slides, the, the first one? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and also wanted to say, it looks like we have uh, uh, folks here from Princeton, New Jersey, and, yes, uh, and DC, so it's really great. Too. <laughs> okay. okay. So I just want to do a quick introduction um, for my, uh, my book uh, called Little Green. Uh, I, I was born actually at the very beginning and, uh, of the Cultural Revolution. It was announced on that day um, in my university actually, at Peking University. And I find that uh, later, many years later. So I wrote a big, this book when I was a scientist and I um, wrote it in free verse um, because I, I was really clueless as a writer. I was a foreigner and, and uh, studied chemistry, but I had this strong um, feeling like I should also become something else uh, <laughs> in addition to be a scientist. So I started scribbling um, on the pieces of papers in, in my lab books and and lines of something looked like poetry. And until one day, um, MIT uh, had an open mic uh, on a Friday, um, I think last Friday of, of each month. So I went there and I great, braved myself and shared three short poems. And people told me, oh, that's poetry. That's really great. So I discovered I was a poet. So <laughs> and from... <laughs> So then at one point I said, why don't I tell the whole story? Uh, why don't I um, write a book about my childhood? Because when I grew up and we were so isolated from the rest of the world, China was just doing its own thing. And uh, I had never seen a foreigner before and let alone imagining coming to the United States and, and study here and uh, become a scientist. And, uh, eventually a writer here. So this, this book is written um, with a lot of innocence. And I did research during the day. At night, I just come home and I waited for a story to come. Um, and I, you know, and, and within, I, I was in a Harvard Extension writing class. So within three months, I had the first draft of this book. So um, I'm just gonna share the opening lines of this book now, um, so you know what it is about. So I was born in a small city near the East Sea when the great cultural revolution began. My name is Xiao Qing, Little Green. My country, Zhongguo, the Middle Kingdom, when I was 10 years old, our leader died and the revolution ended. And this is how I remember it. Uh, so can we go to the next <laughs> slide? Uh, oh, we, we, we can, yeah, we can just... Um, so what I'm gonna do now, next slide, this is, uh, I just wanna show you how I look like when I was a child. <laughs> So that's my brother and me. We were holding uh, Mao's little red book and, and on my uh, little jacket, it says, yo means uh, very young. It's like kindergarten kids uh, age, right? So yeah, that's how I look like. So now we can switch to the screen. I'm gonna read a poem from this book. 
so so there is this one poem on page 75 in the book and um, it's about ancient tradition of poetry because and um, during that time we like lots of um books were burn burned including some really traditional um um chinese literature books um but um i learned poetry from my father um he memorized a lot of chinese poems and it was a really um now i think of it of it it's like a dream from another life because the word looked so different and and um on the streets people are normally mostly wear blue and gray and some army greens and i had no idea what other kind of people look like and how in ancient time how people look like so so this is one night my father um read a chinese poem to us so in this book it's the chinese poem is translated into english but i read that part first and i i, I will read that part in chinese and so you can hear how, you know, traditional Chinese poetry, how it sounds like in Chinese. So the title is called Zhou Yu and the Xiao Qiao. Those are two legendary figures from the Three Kingdoms. Um, at night, if we were not playing with our friends, we sat on Baba and Mama's big bamboo bed. Mama would be knitting a sweater for one of us. Baba would have a book of ancient poems in his hand. One night, he was reading this poem written 900 years ago about a legendary couple from 1,800 years ago. The Grand River flowing to the east, waves washing it all. Extraordinary beings last thousands of years. To the west of the old fortress, people say it's the red cliff of Zhou Yu from the years of three kingdoms. Baba read it to us and said with a smile on his face, as of seeing what he was describing. And here is a description in Chinese. 大江东去浪淘尽千古风流人物故垒西边人道事三国周郎赤壁乱世崩民惊涛烈岸卷起千堆雪江山如画一时多少豪杰遥想宫颈当年小乔出嫁了雄姿英发。So Zhou Yu was a young man, handsome and the most talented in the country. Xiao Qiao must have been 16 or 17. She knew books and poetry, a beauty the whole country had fallen for. One day, on the Grand River, there were happy drum beats in the spring air. Yu, with all of his friends, waited with a banquet prepared. His bride, Xiao Qiao, in a red silk wedding dress, coming from another boat, decorated, decorated with flowers and lanterns. Baba paused and sighed with such feelings what a beautiful time of life it must have been. Mama looked at him with a smile too. She said before he continued, the children are too young to understand these things. But I thought what he said was beautiful and wanted to hear more. Baba laughed a little at what Mama said, looking at the Gugu and me apologetically and went back to reading his book again. I imagined for the rest of the night the life he described in the poem and I wondered by myself where that beautiful time had gone.
So, <laughs> thank you. Beautiful. This thank is, you so much. I, I just wanted to interject here. Um, this is the third, for those of you who are new to Belmont Poetry Night, this is the third time that we've actually had poetry read in original language and in translation. And what, uh, what has been really delightful as a listener has been to listen to the translation of it and then use the reading of the original to as as a meditation so that you're listening to the even though you may understand the general meaning from the translation that when you're listening to the original then you can appreciate really one aspect of poetry which is the purest form of it as music so i invite all of you if you don't understand uh, the, the original poem to just appreciate it as a meditation on the music of the poetry. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so uh, let's move on to the next uh, slide. Okay. So the next, the next poem I would want to present is the map, it's a bilingual poem. I wrote this poem because every time I uh, went back to visit my parents in China and I will go out with my friends, um, every time my father would pull out a map. He wanted to know where exactly where I go and, uh, and uh, sometimes he, he, he and my mom would come to the gate to meet me and so we, we have really, I have really, really loving parents. And, and um, so sometimes even it's just a street not far from home, he still wants to look and you see, oh, it's this small street. So it, the image is just uh, stayed with me. Um, like for all of those years, I wandered off to the world and, uh, but you know, they are, um, getting old in the, in the 80s, so I cannot see them uh, now due to the COVID-19. Uh, even though I, I actually I went um, to China for four months because of my mother's hospitalization, actually I experienced one week lockdown in China and traveled across the world in COVID-19 because my event with Chinese Culture Center with Michael actually, and they 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 said they the San Francisco thought it was low risk here. So they said, we're not going to cancel it. So I left my family and came here for poetry <laughs> for this. So, uh, so I'm going to, um, so the public library has a wonderful series called Poem of the Day. It's curated by the current poet laureate, Kim Shuck. And so I highly uh, recommend it. And I ask everybody to go check this out. So we can go to the next page. So this is my parents. <laughs> I uh, was in my father's arm. I was only one year old. And, you know, they were um, traveling to their hometown, uh, Nantong in China. It's a, it's a town, beautiful town on Yangtze River. So, uh, okay, I read the, the map English first. When I was born, your bosom was the map. I occupied all of it in your cradling arms. When I began to walk, your eyesight was the map. I learned my steps, toddling and waddling in your adoring gaze. When I started school, your mind became a map. I ventured out and back, morning and night, in your unceasing care. When I grew up and left home, from hometown to other town, home country to other country, your heart became the map. I searched far and wide, high and low for my direction and the place in the world, 
in your loving thoughts. Whenever I set out for a journey, you ask for my destination, studied an open map. And each time, accurately located the point of my being. Whenever I set up for a journey, you ask me for my destination, studied an open map, and each time accurately located the point of my being. Then one day, you picked up a magnifying glass, eyes moving closer and closer, hands trembling more and more. Finally, at a loss, no longer seeing clearly the lines and the points on the map, you hold me in your heart. Gradually, growing old, one day you can only walk in my eyes sight, fumbling steps, every trip outside and adventure. From now on, I will walk by your side so you can lean on my arms when we are at a loss, not knowing where to go. Love is the map. Thank you. <laughs> I, I will also read this poem in Chinese if we move to the next slide. Oh, no, <laughs> that's my, yeah. Oh, where is the, oh, uh, so I need to make this screen smaller. Somehow it's occupying my whole screen. The, the, oh, okay. So um, I didn't put the slides here because I was, okay, so we can go, yeah, we can stay here. So I will read the map in Chinese. 地图刚出生时，你的胸怀是一张地图，我是那地图的全部，在你的怀抱中。刚走路时，你的目光是一张地图，我在那地图中摇摇学步，在你的注视中。上学时，我走出了家门，你的脑海。是一张地图，我在那地图中朝出暮归，在你的牵挂中。长大后，我离开了家，从故乡到外乡，从祖国到异国，你的心是一张地图，我在那地图中摸索方向，寻找位置，在你的。想念中，每当我开始一个旅程，你总会打开一张地图，询问我的去处，时时准确的找到我的所在。后来，你拿起了放大镜，眼睛离地图地图越来越近，手抖得越来越厉害，终于茫然中，你已经看不清。地图上的点与线，我在你的心里渐行渐慢。有一天，你只能在我的目光里蹒跚。每一次出行都是一场冒险。从此，我将把你搀扶在我的臂弯。当我们茫然不知所向，爱是一张。Thank you. May we all be united with our beloved ones soon. Yeah, many of us are in the same situation with our parents far away. Mine in China and my friends here too. So I will let's move to another slide. I will talk science just for one poem. <laughs> Yeah, 
right, just keep going. Yeah, so this is a photo of me once as a scientist. Actually, I went to, uh, to a 20, 120th anniversary of Peking University celebration, and I sneak back to the lab. And, and so this is me in the lab pretending again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's move to another slide. So I want to introduce this concept of, of bonding uh, in chemistry. So we, are, we have so much plastic. I used to be a polymer scientist. A true, I mean, I, I did biodegradable polymers. So I always call myself a good chemist. <laughs> so because my polymers are degradable. The reason lots of the polymers are not degradable because they are made to last. So think about you buy a plastic, uh, uh, like a salad spinner. You don't want it to degrade, right, overnight. There's, a, there's no spinner. And so, so, but we discard so much of it, and especially with plastic bags. That's all because this kind of polymer are formed with a chemical bond called covalent bond. They don't degrade very fast, hence our problems. So, but it's also like in this sense, there is a metaphor here too, because the bonding needs to be just be right for everything to be okay. So I will share this poem called The Game of Bonding, a story of plastics. And in, also in honor of all of my friends, scientist friends here who are actually making drugs. Some of them are making drugs and some are doing vaccine development for, for COVID-19, for the crisis. So we do need science, we need good science. So Game of the Bonding, a story of plastics. What are plastics but the same materials that make up you and me? Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. What are they but like us of life, longing to come into forms and the beings that can be seen, touched, used, and appreciated through bondings, bondings sometimes too intimate, covalent, and long lasting according to our ever so particularly human needs. Nature made or human made can both sustain or destroy lives, but in essence, as mass, there's no increase, no decrease, no creation, no elimination, as the heart sutra says, and as the physical law states. Thus, no liking or hating shall be applied towards the same matter that make up you and me. The human, curious child of nature discovers a small secret of nature designs a game and it plays it too far. Now we have waves, waves that are human made of plastics, of covalent bondings coming into being for a few seconds or hours or days or years of usage, then discarded to form waves of sheets, chunks, chips, fibers, beads, and the particles of weights wastes of covalent bondings on top of the lands on bottom of the ocean in the air we breathe in the water we drink in a small bird's stomach in a young mother's breasts in the cell's thin memory in the surfer's giant waves we are nature's failed students punished by our mistake of not being able to learn the total truth, the way, before trying our hands on alchemy, because we thought we can and sold our soul to the devil who said, yes, yes, you can, without mentioning the consequences of our actions. The devil is nothing but the partial truth, which is what we know and always insist as total truth. What makes anything evil often is our inability, inability to bear the consequences. Yet in nature's time, God's eyes, everything is degradable, including the consequence itself. Buddha says, 
all things are emptiness. They are without defining characteristics. They are not born, they do not cease, they are not defiled, they are not undefiled. They have no increase, they have no decrease. Jesus says, love your enemy. Your enemy is yourself. Lao Tzu says, all is one. The plastic is you. You are the plastic. Thank you. <laughs> so, how are we doing for time? We're right on time. What do you want to? Uh, we're at seven thirty-five, so you have about ten more minutes or fifteen more minutes. So oh, that's um, great. There's no alarm that's going to go off or anything. So okay, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just. Uh, want to share one very short poem before we move to Michael. I wrote it, wrote this for uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Um, actually, it was written on the Chinese Memorial Day, uh, which is uh, April 3rd here, but uh, it's April 4th there. It's actually Chinese Memor Memorial Day then. So that day, a million people have been diagnosed positive, but I don't know how many, I mean, the numbers had increased so much, but it was astonished enough then. So the poem is called Today. Today, the world has fallen ill. Today, a million have been diagnosed. Today, tens of thousands have left us. Today, the door to heaven is crushed. Today, angels in white are fighting on earth for us. Today, a virus is forcing all nations into a united front. Today, we humans have to learn to become one. Thank you. So we will move to uh, the two language one community project. Yeah, beautiful. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Great. So I don't know if it's possible to have you both on the screen at the same time, but as each of you are talking, you'll you'll come up. So yeah, we will alternate. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. So welcome, Michael. Um, and I, yeah, I'd love to hear more. Uh, you talk more about your project together, which is so okay. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? You're good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, yes. Because my, I've lost the screen, so I can't see anything, but at least oh, I know you can. Oh, we can see you. <laughs> okay. That's so maybe fair. we can bring up the slide, Jackie, for the project. <laughs> the slide. And uh, tell me when you want me to start, since I can't see anything. You can, yeah, you can talk now, because we don't okay. see the slides now. <laughs> okay. So the slides of, that, um, of our event uh, of catching memory, yeah, so. Okay, sorry, I just, um, that took my poem off the screen, so. Try to oh, I, then I will talk now. So this is a slide of an event I crossed the ocean for during the COVID-19 crisis. And it's an event hosted by the Chinese Culture Center for our project called Two Languages, One Community, which we have been working on for the past three years to bring Chinese American and African American communities together. And uh, so um, in this event, we shared our poetry, like because I translated some of Michael's poem into Chinese. And, and for the part workshop, we worked with Oakland Asian Culture Center and um, we have a book coming called Catching Memory. So we put all of the participants' work into this one book. And we are also launching a website called Two Languages, One Community, One Word dot com. So, uh, Michael, do you want to say something? Um, why don't I just go into the poems? Okay, so Michael, well, uh, so we move uh, further down to your... Uh, this is the Catching Memory. This is a book cover. Our beautiful uh, mothers are on it. <laughs> the cover that the cover that was just shown, I want everyone to pay attention to the photo that's there because of my mother. 
because the next, um, the first poem I'm going to read is based on that photograph. Yeah, I also have the slides with your mom holding you in the next slide. Yes, right. you can I, read it now, yeah. So the reason I don't want people to see that other photograph is because that's the one the poem is actually um, based on. It's called Black Star, Gaynell War, 1932 to 2015, with my mother. And Chun and I wrote a lot about our families when we start working together on these poems and have these um, poems appear about our mothers. Black Star. She got called Shinola outside her name as slight against her blackness by lost souls caught inescapably in her dark attraction and blinded by her radiance in the sky. I read the Chinese. Hei Mingxing. 作为对他黑的蔑视，他被那些失落在他无法逃脱的黑色的吸引力中和被他在天空中耀眼的光芒照瞎了眼睛的灵魂们外号为“Shinola”邪游。Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And both we were both asked by the Chinese Cultural Center to respond to COVID-19 and going on simultaneously with that were these violent attacks against Asian people around the yeah. world. And so I wrote this piece right. a call to your salient who yeah. attacks us all. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So this is to your salient who attacks us all and the video can be found on our um, website. Do you call yourself God fearing, devoted to do on to others? Does your God condone your violence your ignorance, your corruption? Does your God hate your neighbor like you do? Does your God share your love for prophets bearing false witness, fueling your grievance fever? Do you swallow the lies they regurgitate? Do you really need a reason? Are you truly a true believer of both God and golden calf? Does the all-knowing know you? Do they love you as you are? Does it matter that they are watching your naked depravity? Do you pray before you pray on innocence in this guilty world? Do you have your God's blessing or are you as godless as you seem? Did your father teach you to beat the mean and maim? Is he proud of your cowardice? Does your mother say, well done, son? Did they train you in backwardness? Do you feel bigger in your smallness, content with acts of youthlessness? Is your inner bully seething still beneath your concealed surface? Are you comforted in your criminality, stupefied by superiority, simply insane or lost? Who are you? Thank you, Michael. And uh, yeah, this is a, I was really so moved by this poem when it came out. It's, it, uh, Michael wrote this after uh, the Bayview incident, an, an old um, Asian gentleman was, was attacked, verbally attacked. Um, and we all have seen that here in San Francisco, the videos and everything. So he wrote this poem. Um, and at that time, either the COVID-19 is, really going full speed and, and lots of Asians faced, um, um, you know, quite unpleasant um, encounterings. So I translate this into Chinese and Jackie, do we have time? Do, should I read it in Chinese? Okay, great. Um, 是攻击你们的人, 他们在攻击我们所有人, 这是正在进行中的咆哮, 对新冠, 疫情中对亚裔暴力攻击的攻击的回应，你自称敬畏上帝吗？你致力于己所不欲，勿施于人吗？你的上帝宽恕了你的暴力、你的无知、你的堕落吗？你的上帝像你这样仇恨你的邻
真正的信徒吗？你那全知的神认识你吗？他们会爱这样的你吗？他们在乎看着你赤裸的堕落吗？哦，你在乎他们看着你赤裸的堕落吗？在练习这个有罪的世界上的无辜者时，你祈祷吗？你有上帝的祝福吗？还是像你看起来那样没有上帝？你的父亲教你去攻击、贬低和残害他人吗？他会为你的怯懦感到骄傲吗？你的母亲会说“干得好，儿子”吗？他们训练你倒退落后了吗？你被逼渺小时感到更强大吗？你满足于自己无意的行为吗？隐藏在你的表面下的恶霸还在沸腾吗？你在被优越性麻木了的犯罪中受到了安慰吗？是疯了还是迷路了？你是谁 ？Thank you. Thank you so much for that gift. I'm just so moved,、uh, even more than I. I think I expected to be to hear you both together.、Um, I have.、Uh, did are you? That, was that the final poem that you were going to? Yes, yes. I think we take you, enough time, to, right? <laughs> yeah. Are you open to a few a few questions? Oh yeah. Yeah, great.、Sure. So my first question, and I invite anybody. To, we'll probably just spend about ten minutes on questions before、mm -hmm. we move to the open mic. And I invite if you to write in the chat if you have questions. I just have a couple. My first one is that、um, it strikes me the serendipity of the two of you coming together、uh, at this time. Um, while we're experiencing attacks on Chinese people and Asian Americans, and at the same time,、uh, black people in our community, and it strikes me that your project together seems even more relevant <laughs> today than possibly when you first came together.、Mm -hmm. So my question is: Does your project take on a different? Meaning, or a newer meaning, or a more nuanced meaning today than when you first came together, and that's a question for both of you. Well, certainly it does.、Um, we started working on it like a few,、uh, three, two, three years ago.、Um, so we both read read at Jack Hirschman, the poet laureate, San Francisco poet laureate, Jack Hirschman's series with the、uh, Friends of the Public Library. So we met there, and I think I first went to Michael's reading, and he discovered a Chinese, Chinese poet, <laughs> and, and he always wanted his、uh, poetry to be translated. So we started from there. For me,、uh, and I think for Michael too. So we look at the two communities together as we start working together for our own poetry, and we feel there there are really not a lot of true like. Connections like not the not like culturally, they seem to be somewhat isolated. And so for me, I like connecting communities. I said, why not? I will be friends with with whoever from wherever which country. Why are those people not really、uh, more connected? So that's how we started. We had no idea、uh, that what's going to happen in the future. It was very innocent and. So we just said, "Oh, why not? We we will start working on it." So that's how, three years later, we are right in the middle of this, and it changes the energy,、uh, quite a lot, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. But we are, I'm, I'm, we are both very glad that we've been working on it, with or without the movement,、uh, yeah. and the crisis now, COVID nineteen crisis now. Yeah. So, Michael. Yeah, and it really did start as a kind of personal、um, quest. As Chun mentioned, I always wanted my Poetry translated into chi Chinese, and I spent、uh, years actually trying to make that happen. And I'm I'm normally pretty good at making things happen. I pretty much go to my network, I put it out there in the world, and then the vision, you know, comes forth. But this was this one, it wasn't happening. And I even knew people in China that I reached out to, and I just decided, okay, that's not happening. I have plenty to do. I'm going to put that on the back burner. And so my kind of normal strategic approach for things wasn't working. And then happened to be at a reading, at a poetry reading, 
And that's how we met. And without, you know, all the strategizing involved. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that this project, which started as a personal quest, um, became this thing where I knew already from being translated before that you really have to get into the culture of the person who's being translated and the person who's translating you. And we could see that evolving with the stories that were coming out of our, not only the poetry, but the process we were going through as, as well. And we just decided this can be something that can be shared in these communities where the sharing of their stories through two languages, one community project, you know, could they could experience the same thing we were experiencing. Right. We, it's a really a, a, a wonderful journey because I write both in English and Chinese. Um, I, I write poetry in both. That's why you see those bilingual poetry. And, uh, and uh, so we had a lot of discussions because some things are really hard to translate. And, uh, and also when I write in English, sometimes I don't know a word is still even being used now. And when I, I learned my English in China, uh, <laughs> sometimes I have no clue. I might use a word that's uh, out, outdated, you know, and, and something, and some, but sometimes I present a word, Michael said, oh, I have not seen that before. <laughs> so of course, he, he's an amazing po poetry ed editor and uh, you know, amazing poet himself. So we have those amazing, uh, like really, great exchanges between us. So I, he, he's one of my very important go-to person for my English poems and, and you know, yeah. for Chinese. We also right. go to, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, that's a great segue into my next question, which is you said you write in English and you write in, in Chinese. So often people, uh, don't translate their own work because it's mm -hmm. so difficult to translate their own work, right? It is. Sometimes need a, an outside eye and ear to translate. So I wanted you to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. what it's like to translate your own work. Mm -hmm. Is it different to translate from English to Spanish to, to Chinese <laughs> than it is from Chinese to English? Yes, it is very different. And I actually, um, depend on which poem. Some poems translate really easily, but some you just struggle for a long time. I um, translate my own poetry because I can write in, I can write straight in both. And I think it's just such a process for another person to go through. And I know exactly what I am talking about in the poetry. So I might as well just make decisions by myself. <laughs> so, and, and so that's, I mean, it's a tough process. For example, even for the poem map, the map, I actually don't remember what I first wrote it in. And my friends asked me, and said, gee, I have to go back to check. Cause I went back and forth so many times. But the Chinese poem was finalized much earlier in this case. And I debated over like probably five words in the English version for, for over, for more than a year. <laughs> and wow. the, and the, 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 before I hand it to, to, to the poem of the day, to, to Kim, and I sat here at this table for hours, trying to make the final decision. At that point, nobody can make the decision for you. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I can, you know, I, of course I can tell consulted with my American poet friends, but the final decision is yours. Yeah. yeah. So. And then, so do you ever translate in one language and realize, oh, actually, I have a better, does the translation, since you're doing it yourself, does the translation ever affect your original and cause you to revise your original? It does. I mean, also, all kinds of things happen. <laughs> but I have to say some poems, it's a one-shot deal. You don't want to change a world. Like some of my poems and uh, my, my own favorite ones. And once it's set, it's set. Even I translate it into another language, that's not going to change anything. But sometimes it does, yeah. Wow, well, great. It was so enlightening. I actually feel like I have a hundred other questions and I would love to, when this is all wrapped up, sit down and have tea with all of you and, 
<laughs> and we'll 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 continue the conversation. Um, but I want to get to our open mic. Uh, it's one yes. of the parts of the evening that I really look forward to because we have a regular um, showing of our community who comes together to read for open mic each month, and it delights me every time to see um, folks come back um, to read and share their work at a time, especially now, where community seems to be just so important to all of us. So I'm glad you're here. I will go ahead. Um, at the end, if I forget, remind me to post the link to your book. Uh, and I'll put Thank that you. in the chat. Yeah, and I encourage everyone to go ahead and, and purchase that, which I'll, I'll add in the chat at the end. But don't let me forget. And in the chat, I'm going to put our, uh, our reading order. And I'm going to do something tonight that I haven't done in a really long time, is that I, I generally defer to our featured poets and then our open mic readers. And tonight I'm, I'm going to read one of my own poems because I'm just wrapping up the, uh, the final stages of sending it to print. <laughs> and so um, the, the poem I chose is a very personal one. And I, it'll be in, in, it's in my forthcoming book, Seven Spirits. <laughs> which is out in, uh, let's see, which will be out in October. And uh, I didn't, I, I pulled this one because I felt like it was uh, one that reveals uh, a lot about me, I believe, and um, isn't really relevant to any subject tonight other than I just, as I'm putting this work out into the world, which is uh, reveals a lot about about me, um, I just thought I would start dipping my toe into that uh, pool of showing more <laughs> more of my work. So this one is called Domestic Nonviolence, and it is after the haiku poem by Shusan Kato, which says, "I kill an ant and realize." My three children have been watching. Domestic nonviolence. It is my son who lowers the glass over the wolf spider. Gentle, gentle. Not to scare or catch her hairy leg under the lip. He slides a paper under, soft, soft, lifts her out our new back door, goes back to his video game, not the shooting kind. Thank you. And for our first open mic reader, I'd like to invite Lois Freed. Thank you, Jackie. I love ride, taking BART into San Francisco, and I have a need to go there at least, a, at least once a month, usually, for meetings. And since COVID-19, I have not been able to uh, take the train in and just people watch. I love people watching at the airport, on the trains, and the last time I was on a train, on a BART train going into San Francisco and coming home from San Francisco back here to Foster City was around November, December. And uh, I had a piece of paper and I just scribbled out this poem. It's called, People on a Train. Stand clear of the doors, the train is departing. Subliminal messages are all around. The train is packed to capacity. These people all have a destination. Where are they going? Maybe the man with the dreads, dressed in his best suit, is thinking, this will be the day that I land my dream job. The woman in the black slacks and oversized white shirt, 
the love of her life just said goodbye, and now the gears in her brain are stuck. The teen girl and guy sitting side by side, texting each other the same message. If I could not use my smartphone, I'd throw up on this train. The petite, dark-haired woman with her matching luggage all packed is excited and heading to parts unknown. The casually dressed young man wearing Nike Jordans, has his suitcase stuffed between his legs. It didn't work out and he's heading back home. The 40 something man on his laptop has a huge smile on his face that says, work was awesome today, looking forward to tomorrow. The cute lady in the designer glasses says, oops, my ticket doesn't have enough money. Do you have a couple of bucks I could borrow? Subliminal messages all around, all around. Stand clear the doors. The train is approaching the next station. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you, Lois. Thanks for kicking us off. Next up, we have Jialu Mi, and it looks like you, uh, Jian Yan Mi. Hi, welcome. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie, uh, uh, for organizing this uh, interesting uh, reading. Greeting from the East Coast, from Princeton. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Chen and Michael's readings. Yeah, actually, Dr. Yu and uh, me are uh, alumni from Beijing University. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I was in a graduate school, probably you were under. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, went, I went to both. Great, yeah. great meeting of East and West, literally. Yeah, of course. You know, American East Coast and West Coast and China and uh, America, you know, San Francisco. I study UC Davis, you know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Gary Slater was one of my uh, mentors at UC Davis. Yeah. So, you know, Gary Slater, right? everybody, you know, San Francisco, right? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Great. I, uh, I just uh, read a short poem. Uh, I'll read an English first, and then I'll read the Chinese. Okay. So, Perfect. this is an eco poem. Yeah. Good. Oh, by the way, uh, last year uh, I published uh, Deep Breath, a collection of my poem, 500 pages, Chinese and English, bilingual. I have six translators. It's so hard to, uh, you know, uh, put different voices into one. <laughs> okay. Heart Sutra on the Ganges River. Where does the water in the Ganges come from? From deep slow spoke the Buddha. By how does it come? Freely flowing spoke the Buddha. To where does it flow? All the way down, thus spoke the Buddha. Want to cross a river? Asked the guru. No, the traveler answered. Why not? Asked the guru. Still coming back after crossing, the traveler answered, In what sense? Asked the guru. We're not on the other shore. The traveler answered, Traveler, guru, Persian pyramid, Persian pyramid. A big boat was stranded on the Ganges last night. Snow peaks on the Himalayan glacier fleet, saying reported. Congratulations on the stopping Brahmatutra River. The world highest dam stands on the majestic plateau, CCTV reported. Where does the water in the Ganges come from? From the emptiness, spoke the Buddha. By what means? By the ferryman's bamboo pole, spoke the Buddha. To where does it flow? Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form, spoke the Buddha. Rupan, Shenyata, Shenyata, Va, Rupan. Om Mani Padmai.
it's an English version. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll read the, the Chinese, uh, say a uh, different, you know, uh, uh, flavor. Well, the Chinese we call shigo means poetry and singing, you know. In classic Chinese, basically the they were written for chanting, recitation, you know, after drinking, probably, you know, uh, get drunk, you know, that kind of intoxicated, like a very romantic image of poet, you know, being a poet. Okay. 恒河上的心经，恒河之水自何处来？ 自雪风山处佛说如何而来自由流淌佛说流向何处流向地出佛说波罗蜜多 报道，恒河之水自何处而来？自空处而来？佛说，如何而来？摆渡者的竹竿。佛说，流向何处？ 流向低处，舍即空，空即色。佛说：如盘，先念它，先念它，瓦如盘。哦。Oh, thank you for that beautiful experience. It makes me feel like I'm missing all kinds of music by being limited to the English language. Thank you for that. <laughs> Next up, we have Phyllis Klein. Oh, wow. Can you hear me? Oh, but am I ever glad I'm here tonight? Um, Oh, and thanks for putting up the links to the, um, thank you for that, yeah. Um, so I am, I'm gonna read something. I wasn't planning on reading this. Um, so forgive me uh, for those of you who've heard it before, but um, it just felt like with the, um, with the Chinese poetry, I, I felt that I wanted to read this. So. It's a, it comes from a news story. Um, I have a book that's a poetry about the news. And um, it's, uh, um, it's a news story about letters that were written um, in uh, Taiwan during the White Terror. Um, uh, that, um, uh, it, so the, these letters were written right before the, the men and the who wrote them were executed the next day. Um, and, and then the letters 
uh, were lost for maybe 60 years um, and then discovered by a family member. Um, so the name of the poem is, um, is a t it's a title, it's title is, uh, is from one of the letters. It's called, It Should Be Me Who Is Looking After You. Letters from the Dead, Taiwan. Only the night before execution are they given a pen and paper to say what will be unseen for decades. He takes his pen, writes the message to his unborn child. Before long, I will leave this earth. His wife feels their child inside her. All she knows is his disappearance, the emptiness. Alas, to be unable to see you, to hug you, to kiss you once. The child arrives. Her father is part of a flock of magpies. I am heartbroken, he says. My regret is unending. All she knows is her father is not there. All she knows is nothing. For 60 years, she knows not a thing until the letter arrives. Another takes his pen, writes a message to his son. On this earth, you will never see your father again. His father is a tawny owl on a blue oak branch. This is the saddest thing, he tells him. The sun is lonely. You must not forget your father. This man writes to his mother, your son believes that people who die have a spirit. She feels him near her like a robin flying through the open window. Your son is determined to come to your side every day to keep in touch. She feels the draft of wings on her face. To see your peaceful eyes, to make sure you eat three meals a day. So many days, so many years later, the letters arrive, the words fly off the paper to settle on teardrops, tiny lanterns drifting. Beautiful. Great choice for tonight. Thank you so much for reading that one for us, Phyllis. Phil Harris is next. I'm not sure. I'm seeing you there, but I'm not sure if you're able so to unmute. Yeah, go. I'm unmuted now. Sorry, did I mute somewhere in the middle, or have you heard nothing? You're on. Okay. You're so I'm gonna I'm gonna read three, two of them very short, one slightly longer, uh, which will explain why I was so late to the meeting tonight. Uh, the first one is called Process of Elimination. A thought occurred to me, and I'd like to set the record straight: all beings, high or low. Saner, sinner, all eliminate. And the second one is called Geriatric Lament. And it was I kind of, I wasn't going to do it, but it got called to mind by Chun Yu's reference to being away from our parents or whoever. And it's something I wrote a couple of years before my mother in law died. So, Geriatric Lament. When I was small and wheeled about, it was the only way I could get out. Now that I am past four score, year and ten, it's the only way I can get out again. And finally, the one that explains my lateness, it's called the voice on the phone. The voice on the phone said, tell me your name. The voice on the phone confirmed my number. The voice on the phone asked me my problem. The voice on the phone would not understand. I wanted to speak to a real, live, actual person. I did not want to be speaking to a recording. I then asked for an operator, an agent, or a rep. I was ignored and began pressing the zero key. 
The voice on the phone was silent a long time. The voice, voice on the phone told me to start again. The voice on the phone made me swear, yell. The voice on the phone just told me goodbye. I threw down my phone, face and ears scarlet. I avoided being rash, got up and left the room. I came back later, redialed the service number. I thought I'd be calm on the voice with, as the voice on the phone. The voice on the phone, a so clever recording. The voice on the phone, a computer answer. The voice on the phone me a mad, made me a mad dance. The voice on the phone promised victory. I waited on hold while I did what it promised. I waited so long I knew I would go insane. I waited and a person finally deigned to answer and I hope foolishly though I understood the drill. The voice on the phone said, tell me your name. The voice on the phone confirmed my number. The voice on the phone asked you my problem. The voice on the phone asked me why I screamed. I will bore you no longer. You've been here too long. The more we automate, the worse service will be. Despite every slogan, might be imagined, despair, even if we reach a living person, no one there. And I know we've all had that experience, and that's where I've been for like a week. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. I think it highlights how much we're all craving human connection. Thanks, Phil. Next, we have Jim Artatos. <laughs> <Yes>. Yep. <laughs> Jim, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unmute you because I think. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi. Oh, hi. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a poem called Ode to the Summer of Love, which, as you may recall, or those of you old enough, was in the 60s. So it brings back memories. Ode to the Summer of Love. <clears throat> Turn on, tune in, drop out. Timothy Leary told us in the summer of 67, where in Golden Gate Park, Drugs and music filled the air and the souls of those conscious and unconscious drove desires of realms, celestial beauty, and earthly fright. Depending on your LSD or weed-filled breeze from bongs and pipes that moved the smoke and coke and hash-filled toke. But 50 years have pushed along with mystic renaissance of love and peace and cultured bliss and lawful confrontation that led to clash of freedom flights and fights of love and hate and war and ordered groundings and grindings. The new millennials have found that peace and love and harmony are more than words to change the generation of the free into the home of the grave. Our lives have grown from years of confrontation, agitation, dislocation. We will once again feel the force of Timothy Leary to become sensitive to the triggers of mind and soul, to express our internal perspectives, tune in, to create our own path and commit to personal choice as we reject the world of mass mentality to drop out. The summer of love is back. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. That was great to have that now in the middle of all this other mess, huh? Thank you. Thanks for that. It was a good year, I might add. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, 67. I'm just and, and the late 60s are all good, but 67 was saying. a special. <laughs> Is that when you were born, Jackie? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> yeah. um, welcome, Luke. Thanks for coming back. Great to see you again. You're up next. Well, hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, this is... Um, uh, 
Luke, you're cutting like, out. Oh. You're cutting out for me. Um, I'm not Wait sure. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Um, this is my poem dedicated to uh, Zen meditation and and Buddhism. And I dedicate this poem to Frank Zappa. You know. And the, the title of the poem is called "I Am a Zen Poem." Hi, I am a Zen poem. I talk a lot by saying little. I shout loud by whispering. I understand everything because I know nothing. Left is right. Logic is nonsense. Up is down. This is that. Who are you? Brilliant. Thank you so much. Perfect for, for tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Dane. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Uh, and welcome to your first reading here at Belmont Poetry Night. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, toes no home. You found a bird's nest. You by asking. Opportunity placed at your disposal. Willingness to receive makes possible future present. No sorrow for chasing. Chasing what is chasing you. This is a lesson I have learned too. Forgetting forgetfulness awakens me to sleepy mindlessness. Not clear, still, pool, perfect reflection of all that is possible. Any breeze flutters leaves, makes snapping, falling, floating, landing last upon the ground. Dirt they be now under feet. Feet chasing, chasing what is always chased standing still upon dampness, confused. No place to bury toes as on sandy beach, run on, move on in wretched, loathsome panic, fearing what might be blindly, dumbly to the gift that is. Ah, fear my friend and I get drunk. I fight to crowd out this drunken song. Falling down is an easy win for gravity is everywhere and never sleeps. Spinning, it just spins. In stuporous vision, I see you standing there. I lift my head from the barroom table, drowsy between states of dreaming dreams. I see you not there. I lift my face now, sober from the carpet of dead leaves, standing in bare feet on their dirt, toes having no place to hide, longing for summer sun, painted beach sand warm. The lesson is to learn to stand still while we hurtle through space. Over there is over here to someone else. So far is so close, a distance, a galaxy. Chasing love is chasing, chasing inspiration is chasing, chasing for answers, chasing in a race of questions. Standing still, I have traveled from here to there and back again faster than my blink, waiting for the answer, waiting to be caught. Chasing love is like chasing inspiration. I will remember how to let it catch me. Thank you. Oh, so powerful. Thank you so much for being here. And I invite you to come back again and read. I would love to, to have you read again. So hope to see you again here. Thank you. Um, next we have Ed, my cue. Okay, can you hear me now? Hi, Ed. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I have a poem called Peace in Every Breath. Peace is a place we need to build now while we can. We didn't invent ourselves back down that long, winding, long line. We had been seeking to be a people from our beginnings. Will we end here now? Can our toil and struggle re -arc the bridge pole and remake the rainbow? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. You are cutting out in the little, and I think that last line is, seems really important if I heard it correctly. Can you repeat it again? The last line? Uh, and remake 
the rainbow. The, the, it was the two lines before that about the bridge. Okay. I wanted to hear that. Can yeah. our toil and struggle re -arc the bridge hope and remake the rainbow? That's it. Thank Is you. That clear? That's okay. it. Thank you. That was clear. And I didn't want to miss it because it seems really important to hear. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Appropriate theme for tonight. Um, and next we have Eric, AKA Disclaimer. Thanks for coming back, Eric. Uh, thank you for letting me read. Uh, so I'm gonna read a trio of haikus called A Comet Diary. July 17th, 2020. Thin vellum velum of cloud above horizon on which writes quill pen. July 18th. Bear paw base forming pyramid prism. Comet as refracted beam. July 19th. Tadpole suspended in a frozen lake of night beneath the dip net. Thank you. Oh, wow. That was three. Perfect. Thank you so I much for that. And <laughs> Eric, something about your choices every single time seem to be right on the money with, I don't know, it seems like you must have a ton of poems that to choose from because you always find the one that seems to fit right in. <laughs> Thank you. And Diane Mumi. Hi, how, how's the sound? Okay. When all else fails, meditate. Sit still eyes open. Let beads click. Let mantra run like a soundless river just below the surface. Gardener passes by, blower set to high. In your deepest places, tectonic plates shift. Cold meets warm front. Weather sweeps unseen landscapes weather all around. Perhaps your roof is leaking. Some things will be lost. Still sit. Far below on silent hinges, doors open, doors close as they are wont to do. You could almost hear them. Gears shift. Some things are found. Your car could use an oil change. At the center of your earth, magma rivers change course. Old shorelines vanish, north poles now south. Cell phone chimes, a new text. Still sit still, keep mantra going. Somewhere, everywhere nothing will be the same oh diane that's beautiful thank you so much yeah, i just love the serendipity of the poetry and how we all kind of um we're picking yeah. good things aren't we right yeah <laughs> just uh, it, it seems to be the energy of this night when all our words kind of uh just add to the layers of our community um like we're in tune with each other thank you um and then last but not least we have have i uh, is myrna herschel and i just want to make sure i haven't forgotten anybody who asked to read um, otherwise, Myrna will bring us home. Can I read? Oh, give me one second. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I may have uh, read this poem to some people here, but since um, I believe it has to do with being bilingual or polylingual, and it addresses some of the things we spoke about tonight, I will read it again. 
It's called bending boundaries. I speak in different tongues. I also think in different tongues. But the choice is not always mine. And that is the rub. The thoughts come and go. And if they appear to me in the wrong form, the insistent little devils, I have a heart to heart talk with them and dismiss them. When I stroll through the familiar speech forest, the friendly flower words cluster in the shade, discreet, comely, scented with incense, sized for a small child's hand. The smell of tiny crimson cyclamens reminds me of my old school backpack jammed with lost, uncultivated days. I pluck the word flowers from the forest floor and play with them like I would with toys. The rules of the game live in my bones. The grammar, the syntax, also the murmur of the brook, all hop into a humble bouquet to be brought home and kept in the breakfast cup for as long as they will last. At the fringe of the forest, a view opens up. A blanket meadow, a rainbow of different choices, a bountiful, confusing, seducing array of orange poppies, agapanthus, orchids, bent on forming my thoughts to conform to their grammar, their syntax. I bind them into a lavish bouquet, fit for a porcelain vase. The forest fringe phrase. The words wander more and more often from one world to another, bending boundaries. In the end, they will riot together. Then I will lose myself in them and find myself. I do not know yet what will be the form of my last word. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Myrna. Really, really, thank that you. final thought is amazing. Um, I know, I believe there was one more person who wanted to read. So normally I, uh, we, I try to wrap by 830, but I would, I'd like, I think it was Jing Jing, is that you? Yes. Who wanted, yes. Uh, yeah, please. Please hi. take the floor. Yes. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. I Jackie, I met you, um, you know, a couple of months ago, and I, oh, I know yeah. Mur 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 We we've known each other for so long. Yes, I'm so happy to have you here, and I I'm excited that you'll be reading. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's called Sky Is On Fire. Sky is on fire. Air is a liar. We thought it was fresh oxygen. It blows wicked virus, the true invisible assassin. The ferocious night falls. Lives are taken more and more. Fears and tears building a wailing wall. Cities on lockdown. Masks must be worn. Social distanced hearts feel torn. Sky is sobbing, its teardrops pouring down to the ocean, thunder crashing on the top of mountain. Four months later, shelter in place still in order. COVID-19 vaccine is under development. Poets zooming to break the silence and isolation. Children's virtual classes have begun. Men versus pandemic. When will this battle end? Any silver lining? Hope one day soon. Our borders reopen to the world. Rainbows reach out to all continents. Let's meet for a cup of coffee or a book of poetry 
in that sunny, victorious morning. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you closed for us. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you joined us tonight. I want thank to thank you to all the readers. Uh, thank you especially uh, to Chun and Michael for, for just really blessing us with, the, with your words and your community. I'm going to once again put the link to Chun's book in the, in the chat. I really encourage you to support your local artists, especially at this time, by purchasing their book. Um, and it's a way to, to vote with your dollar and say that this is important to you. I know it's important to me. Um, and it's uh, important not only for poetry, but, the, but that poetry brings us together. And so I'd like to remind you to, um, to, if you're interested in being notified on my mailing list, feel free to email me, um, Jackie at Woman Uprising. Um, if you want to be added to my email list and I can notify you of our upcoming readings. Um, let me put it on here. And then also, um, I'd like to uh, close with something that really struck, uh, struck a chord. I'd like to read this one line from your poem, Chun, and then close with you reading that line. If you can, if, um, it's from your maps poem, and it's the last line. If I can read it in English, and then you close with us reading it in, in Chinese, and it is this. When we are at a loss, uh, not, not knowing where to, when we are at a loss, not knowing where to go, love is the map. I will read the Chinese part. 当我们茫然不知所向,爱是一张地图。Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much for being here and look forward to seeing you next time.